Hello, I'm Patricia McNeely. I'm an Illumin Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, some of the portals, some of the energetics, your physical sensations, and what people commonly call ascension symptoms. And part of the reason for it, uh, because I'm trying to give, give you an overall bigger picture here of not only what's occurring, why it's occurring, but also your own personal multidimensionality and the amazing being that you truly are. So I'm going to start here at source. So this would be you at source. You're a little orby, sort of. Everything's in you and everything's seated within you. Every potential, every great thing, every creative thing that you'll ever do. Um, but it's, it's somewhat in an unformed state. You are alive, you exist. And so some of us, when we were birthed, uh, came from various soul groups. I happen to be from the Magdalene Jeshua soul group of Illumin Twin Flames. And yes, that would be the same person who is known as Jesus here, Jeshua Ben Joseph. Jesus, he's also been known as Sananda in a different paradigm. But there are people who do recognize that it is the same essence. And also, yes, Magdalene, commonly referred to as Saint Mary Magdalene in the Christian tradition. So that is the soul group that I am from. And there are other soul groups, and we have commingled and intermingled. Now, what did we do when we left Source? We actually left our home and intended to go out and explore who we were. Uh, really kind of, uh, it, it would be the same as reading about sailing and yet getting out on a boat and feeling the wind in your hair, tasting the salt, feeling the waves, uh, that's what we decided to do. We decided to experience ourselves in all ways, in many forms. And when we leave the Godhead, we are in our angelic form. Uh, the soul group that I am from, we are angelics. We are source being angelic. So a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be from my direct experience for Illumin Twin Flames. And yet in a general way, this is very similar to many twin flames. So we were twinned. In other words, we split. Our essence split into two whole and equal parts, but sort of unexplored. And yet we have parts of each other within. We can never, ever break this eternal connection of who we are from source. So what did we do? We went and explored at the universal level. Now, at the universal level, we are in our oneness. So here we are. We're, we're still sort of in a one form as an orb with all of our energetics inside. And uh, we were able to move about. When we moved into other levels, other paradigms of experience, we experienced our other angelic forms. We had wings. It wasn't until we got to these levels that we had other limbs in other types of body. So the reason I'm trying to show you this is people from source have a vibration and you are of the highest possible vibration to carry the highest amount of divine love in existence in your heart. So we are actually tra we actually decided to travel and we went through different levels of experience which is are known as dimensions. If we are multidimensional, which means we can experience at different dimensions, and we still maintain our connection to source. So here we are. Uh, when you get into these areas here of galactic, our solar system, uh, this actually is where quite a bit of distortion, damage, wounds took place. So that by the time we actually got here, 
many of us had not only become soul tired, but actually very, very wounded. We were in need of healing. And there were decisions made. There was a decision made that uh, we would have a closed system and would enable entities to come in and receive their healing. Now, these are what are these places? Well, some of these are different uh, galaxies. Different galaxies and different experiences. And we can travel through the dimensions. We have a vibration that enables us to be interdimensional as well as multidimensional. And then you have places like the Pleiades, Arcturus, Aldebaran, Sirius, Andromeda, Nibiru, and not all of these names will be familiar to everybody because you all have chosen different experiences. But these are some of the names that you hear more frequently. But my own, no means is this a comprehensive list. So <clears throat> you've got explorations. Now, Earth was damaged at some point, And this is going back almost about 3 billion years. Um, the grid, the grid that fuels Earth, that is Earth's life source, was damaged. And some of us source beings were the actual ones who were in many ways terraformers and co-creators that came to repair the Earth grid. Now, what occurred, um, there is actual evidence of this. I happened to relive the me memory of it, um, was a, a huge impact. And the impact actually left a crater near the Yucatan Peninsula. And that crater can still be seen in various uh, ways of photographing the geography of that area. A lot of it's worn over and there's coral reefs and so forth. Um, but there's almost a perfect outline of a crater there that is visible. And it was so long ago it's worn out now. So. Um, part of our evolutionary process has been to explore and evolve as entities. We actually decided these were conscious choices to do this, and yet some of us did it repeatedly. We kept repeating the same patterns in the same places, and we not only got wounded, but in many ways wounded ourselves. It was the equivalent of shooting our own selves in the foot. We did it so much. What did we do? Well, sometimes we would stay in a place or we would be stuck in an energetic, um, let's say, the energy of war or poverty or deprivation or something like this or sexual abuse. This then became familiar so that as we incarnated in other places, we actually remembered this familiarity and chose the familiar over the unfamiliar. And it's, it's actually, you could see that in the psyche here on Earth, is that people will choose things and you're saying, what are you, why are you choosing that again? That's insane. You're doing the same thing expecting different results and nothing changes. Well, sometimes people just don't know what to do, but that's all changing. So what I want to tell you here is that we also had a plan to go home again. We had a plan that this would end at some point. This exploration, we would regroup, the bell would ring, we'd regroup and start making our way back home to source. But how are we going to do this? Well, uh, we set up a certain time frame. We actually have had a con time construct. That time construct uh, was commonly referred to as the Mayan calendar. 
So the Maya were a group of people, another group that did help construct this, this time frame around Earth so that we could begin to make our way home, get readjusted, get reconnected, and that's we're the state that a lot of us are in. Now, some of us are poised to go home to source. Some have gone to source. And I don't just mean people who've died and gone to the other side. So what you have here is, here's you on Earth. And maybe things aren't going so well. You really need to reconnect with your divine source so that, and your twin, so that your full abundance can kick in. And yet, what's occurring is that you need to shed the old. You need to get rid of any old wounds, any unusable energies, and also receive in healing so that you can do this. Be with your ten, twin, reunite, merge again. And so you have these portals that you pass through. So every portal, which usually comes with the new moon and culminates with the full moon. The new moon cycles are intended to be uh, your womb of creation, the dark womb of creation. Sometimes it's looking at your shadow self, seeing what, uh, what you need to get rid of. It could be emotions, it could be uh, grief for an old job an old relationship, a house you once loved, a car you loved that maybe you have to replace. Uh, it could be any number of things. It could be that you're still um, grieving the loss of your twin because your twin left you somehow or somebody left, somebody you really love. So your intention that you set at the new moon is very important and then we go through these cycles and bringing in the energetics from source is what occurs at the full moon. So you can fully expect for this to show up in your physical world. And you have a number of portals. So over the past two years, we've been going through several portals of solar energies. And we're also receiving energies from our sun, the um, solar flares that are sent out actually do affect our body. They affect the electromagnetics of the earth. And that's intentional. That's part of our evolutionary process in getting ready for really receiving the new angelic templates of relationship and the new body blueprint. So what you have are other galactic portals that you're passing through. So for sun twins, They've only gone this far. Other twins are all the way through the universal level at the 12th dimension. And the next thing to happen is to re-encounter their twin or encounter their twin, merge, and they've already forged these connections and they will go home to source. Now, the universal energies are frequently very subtle. And the reason for that is these are very fine energies. These energies are like gentle waves and yet they're persistent. And the way this shows up though is this would be little annoyances with people, people that you work with, people in your home, um, just any kind of annoyance that you have to still deal with on a daily basis. And the initial damage occurred here with these these subtleties because we weren't we weren't as uh, let's say a strong personality at that point so everything is very subtle and yet these things can go away from you the wounds can go away also with the subtle energies that you receive so things that normally might make you wheeze or give you a stomach ache or a headache or something like this um, now should be being alleviated with these subtle energies from the universal uh, planes. The cosmic are things from, uh, let's say, your karma from other planets and galaxies. So 
your experiences in both the cosmic and galactic realm, your karma has sometimes been it's sometimes been beyond your control. These are sometimes what are known as ethnic pain bodies. And we see this sometimes with uh, various countries because the uh, spiritual lineage of those angelics that landed on earth, and these could be um, you know, people from India, it could be people from Ireland, it could be people from Mexico. Uh, there's a ethnic pain body or a national pain body ethnic and this tends to be your family your immediate circle this is your um, ethnic origins your community And sometimes your um, it could be your national origins. So anything that may have affected you at these points, uh, as you go through these portals, everything sort of starts scraping off of you. But that's why you'll notice that you go through a portal and yet you're expanded because you you got scraped off stuff scraped off of you. And yet you'll you'll start having things kind of show up in your face. Things will come out of the woodwork. People will come out of the woodwork. The government, national organizations, um, something you know about this particular ethnic group. For example, um, you know a lot of them have had a, a revolution, and there might be some uh, honor thing or something, some way of remembering this. And yet you'll find sometimes well. Maybe I don't want to remember that. Maybe I've just had it with that. Maybe we've been doing this for the past 20 years and I, I don't want to feel obligated anymore. I don't want to feel obligated to this or to that religious organization or this government or I want my own identity. And that's absolutely where you need to be with this is really staying in your own identity because we are no longer identifying with these outer places. We may have favorite places that we've grown to love. There's quite a few people that very much feel the Arcturus or the Pallades or Andromeda. And as we heal on Earth, part of their agreement is that they will go home to those places, sort of like a second home. It would be like bringing all kinds of gifts back to your second home and sharing that with the people at your vacation home while your, let's say, primary home is here. So as you go through these portals of energy and then you're coming back, so each time you're making these connections and you're bringing it to Earth and you're going further and further. And these cycles, um, the, this ascension process, the the general plan so that it gives enough uh, everybody enough time to sort of process it in a more gentle way where it's not forced upon them but the general plan is that over the next 10 years everyone will be receiving their ascension templates and their new blueprints so while it may appear that some people are going ahead of other people many of those people have actually been waiting since the last Earth Ascension cycle 11,000 years ago. There was something that occurred at that point that made it impossible for some twins to ascend together and there was somewhat of a tear in the soul. And this has made it extremely painful, particularly for many females. Uh, this tear of, of losing part of your soul, of your twin falling and we you hear a lot about the fall of humanity. It actually was uh, more like the fall through the dimensions. It was a dimensional tear and that was uh, something that will absolutely affect you at a soul level. So that's getting healed now so that you can. 
So anybody that is trying to tell you, or even if you're telling yourself, or if your twin is telling your, you, if you've met your twin, or you know your twin is here, and they're saying to you, not going to happen in this lifetime, what are you going to believe? Do you believe you came all this way, and you incarnated here to be talked out of your destiny? Especially if you've been waiting for 11,000 years for this to come around again. I mean, remember that many of you are not only receiving what's entirely new and what we plan, you're using the full energies of an entire planetary ascension to do it. So what are you going to believe? I recommend that you believe your heart and tell yourself that while it might take time for the process, I absolutely know we're going to be together. And that's what you stick with. And it's not easy. I know it's very painful and that people will tell you things, but you, the truth of your heart is is that you know the truth and that's, that's how it is. Um, you cannot always dissuade yourself. Dissuading yourself makes it painful. So it takes a very fine balance to balance between patience and waiting for the optimal timing because this is a timing thing and trying to force the issue. If you're trying to force the issue and get in people's face or you know confront people, that is not really the energetic that we're looking for here. We're looking for someone who is aware of who they are and also are willing to be patient and allow all of these divine feminine energies to work on your heart. This is a part of how the runners will return. I'm going to get into some other parts of how they will return. This has been a big mystery and there's a lot of focus on the psyche or the psychology of running. And to me that's a moot point because what are they truly running from? They are running from true love? Well, that just doesn't make sense in a way. Um, they proclaim to want true love, but they're sort of stuck in an old version of it. And they've forgotten from whence they fell. So, you know, it, it's not that you should say, oh, they don't remember. You have to say, they will remember, and they're going to know. That's what you have to tell yourself. You have to say, that person who I love unconditionally, even though they don't see it, they will remember and they'll, they'll remember me. And they'll remember how much we loved each other in all these places. Because would you be going out in the universe or to any cosmic place without your true love? Who else is going to be your best friend? And you've been each other's best friend many times. You've guided each other. Sometimes one of you does not remember a life because you were the guide to your twin. And it's, it's more difficult to hold the memories in this density of something when you were a free spirit. So it's not an easy memory for people to have, but that is actually true for many people. They guided their twins in some of these places, particularly true of Earth. Many females have been the guides to their males while journeying on Earth. I'm going to talk about some other stuff here. So, what I want to talk about is what's happening while you're going through this. Now, while you're going through this, this is you. And again, I'm not a fabulous artist, so I'm going to draw a stick figure. This is you. Okay, and this is your twin. Okay, now what you're doing every time you go through these portals of energy, there's another portal, and here's another one, and here's another one, and they keep getting more expansive. You are expanding, you're constantly being expanded out, both of you. You're being expanded out, and you are each getting equal treatment even though you may not be able to see it. There, there is no favoritism here or, you know, men get this, women get this. 
regardless of gender, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of color or religion or any of that. So you have done something pretty amazing here with your multidimensionality. You left parts of yourself in places that you really need to. So while you're here on Earth and your twin is here, and sometimes maybe your twin might seem like they're still in the third dimension and you're in the fifth. And let me tell you, it's, it is illusory to the degree that you have one counterpart in the fourth fifth. Now guess what? Your twin left himself or herself here at the sixth. Okay? So this is where your new co-creative and healing energies are. Okay? So what's actually happening here? Your twin's pulling you up. But then guess what? We get to the eighth. Who's pulling your twin? It's you. And then you've got your one beingness here at the ninth. Okay, this is where you live in oneness. So I've had reports from people that tell me that they actually experienced their marriage here again, their remarriage with each other, where they actually merged together here. But not here on Earth yet. Not here. So the partial merge has occurred for many people in this instance. And now what has happened? You have merged all of the Cardinal Cross of feminine ener divine feminine energies at the 10th level and your twin yes your twin has been waiting for you here to give you a hand and say come on up I've got you come on I've got you and then you're going and doing your connections to the 11th and 12th so for some of you who are saying why isn't my twin getting this? Really? Have you been able to tap into your heart and really feel what is occurring with your union? This is your union. This is how you, in many ways, have set up your uh, triumphant return to each other to merge. So this was a plan. You know, you had um, places that you were safe in your oneness and you left parts of yourself there almost like someone who climbs a mountain but they leave little packages of food and this is more than food this is the love you left pieces of your heart in these places and those pieces were either you or your twin so how can you not say my twin is doing nothing your twin and you are both doing simultaneously but it's not in a linear fashion it's not, and some people perceive it as, you know, maybe like a horse race. Like, well, my twin's a little ahead of me and I'm here and, you know, we're doing this thing. It's not a race either. This is love. This is helping and assisting each other. You have all of the assistance necessary also from your angels. You have a team that came here and even though they're not seen, you have teams of angels helping you. And who are these people? Who are these angels helping us? You want to know something? They're your friends from these levels. They're actually friends of yours. They know you so well and mostly because they've also interacted with you. We originate from the same place. So while this may be new information for some people, I highly encourage you to 
you know, feel outside of the box. Feel yourself truly as an expanded angelic. And there's a little thing that I like to tell children because I, I do help some children with this also. And children have no problem whatsoever believing that they have a force field. And we all have this force field. It's, it's our aura, it's our etheric body. But when you get to these levels, your force field is huge. That's your force field. It, it's expansive. Your force field here is this big. Your force field out here is this big. So what I would suggest to you is practice. Practice expanding and contracting your force field. Practice opening your chakras like little flowers. You know, move your energies. When you don't know what to do, that's something that you can do if you're by yourself. Use your time wisely to really prepare for your twin to come home to you. And I do mean to either encounter you or re-encounter you here on Earth. Thank you so much. Remember to stay in your heart. And you're doing this for a reason. I'm so glad you're here with me to do this. Thanks for watching. Bye now.